everyone. Um, what I thought I would do today is, I'm not going to show you this entire page, and as you can tell, I'm already starting to work on the background and everything else, but as I told you, part of my hoping to do this is, number one, doing it in order, but also facing those things which I'm really, really nervous about. And if I find a way that I can make what I'm thinking come true, I want to share that with you. And so in this case, what I'm talking about is all this wood in the bookcase. So my view of Ivy's, um, was it grandparents', his, his granddad's study where all this magical things are and all these things that uh, she's always wondered about is that it's more of a, a man, a masculine feel study. And there's a lot of little details on the woodwork which could make it feel very feminine. I've seen some amazing, beautiful versions of this with white or grays or different colors. And I envision this as just very dark, carved wood. And I'm trying to figure out how could I make that be more the reality without losing all the little details, but maybe not highlighting every single one. And I'm also thinking that the, the lights are not on in this place, except for here with the little lantern, or the little Tiffany's lamp, and then I think there's a, there's a candle over there burning, as if she's walked in because he's not there, of course. And so it's got to kind of have that intense feel of, a, not necessarily at night, but a, a room that doesn't have a whole lot of light except for, you know, being irresponsible and <laughs> leaving a candle burning when nobody's in the room. But that was really kind of where I'm at with this. And I'm just thinking it's more masculine. It's going to have deeper, darker tones in it. And um, the first I had to start with was really to set the tone for it was not only I always do my backgrounds. I think you've kind of probably picked that up by now. But also this, this wood. And because I wanted it to be really wood and not painted wood and trying to get that kind of that mahogany, golden brown, deep, dark color. I started kind of playing with the bookcase over here. And what I want to do is show you how I got to this uh, at, on this piece right down in here. Uh, again, be prepared. This is not going to be you do step one, two, three, and it's done. Um, I do everything in massive layers and kind of keep working with it, um, especially in this process because I wanted the undertones of brown, but I need to be able to do highlights, and that's kind of hard. If I went in there with my, you know, this very first uh, color and really, really did it in its normal heaviness, we wouldn't have gotten those different. Um, I'm hoping this looks great when I finish it out. I'm pretty happy with it. I feel like there's some depth in there. It kind of looks like a deep bookcase with the darkness back here, so I'm hoping to get the same thing over here in this little, um, I don't know what this is, just like a little shelf and drawer credenza type thing. So I'm going to bring you in. There we go. And we're just going to start. Now, I'm going to put a list of all the colors that I used down below. I will tell you the colors as I go through them, at least for these first round, so that you really can kind of know what, how I'm doing it and in what level. So one of the first colors I'm trying to find is going to be my just my dark brown. So this is PC946. Now the importance here is to really start off light. Brown is the main color and what I'm going to do is cover this whole thing in this first round of, of brown but extremely light. Hopefully you can see it is ever so lightly. And any place that I think that there's going to be brown as the, as the base.
All right. So as you can tell, it's a, I think it's everything. And it's just my very first round, very, very light. Again, that was PC946. So now the next one that I want to kind of do is go through and mark out where my highlights are going to be. So if we look over at the bookcase here, of course, there's highlights on the front not on the edges, but on the front of the, the bookcase. So I need to figure out if I'm going to do something similar to that here. So I need to figure out if I'm going to do kind of a matching area. To, so if we look here, I need to now figure out where my highlights are going to be on this other piece, because as you can see right there is, is some highlights along. So my lightest color for me to kind of start with is um, going to go in with the sand PC940 and kind of color in a couple little highlights. And this is more for me to not forget those highlights where I want them to start thinking about a little bit. So now we're just going to do a little bit of the highlights. So logically on the front here, when I think of it, uh, this one's going to be a little bit harder this is all going to be lighter than that. So this back in the back of the shelves are going to be the darkest just like over here. So I feel pretty safe to start going in right now. And again, it's just kind of light because A, I don't want to push down because there are so many layers that need to go on this. start darkening so that I see it pop out a little bit um, and I want to start getting these a little bit darker and one of the, the good colors for that uh, that that I want to use for that is going to be the first round of and this is what warms it up a little bit of the Tuscan red so this is PC 937 Tuscan Red and I'm really going to start getting into these corners. Now I am not pushing down really hard. It might look like it just because it's such a strong color, uh, but no, it's still almost as light as everybody else's. It's just a little bit more detail.
So I'm just coming in with the 947, the dark umber. So as I've been sitting here trying to think of how I've seen these type of very highly decorative um, pieces, I suddenly realized that usually, you know, the tops and all the kind of the case, the surrounding ones are all done maybe in one type of wood. So I'm going to try to make it this darker color wood all the way around. Then the door fronts are going to be a slight, and any of these special little decorations here will be the highlighted area. So I'm going to go ahead and go in with my dark umber PC947 and start darkening this up a little bit. So definitely the bun feet would be dark. All of your edges. Again, a very, very light touch. Now I'm coming in with the 944, the terracotta, again to warm it up a little bit, give it a little bit of red, and it's just another layer, so we just start over. And, you know, again, I'm sure there's people who, who pick colors and know exactly how to use them. I just have found that I just so desperately have to do this mixing of colors to get the colors that I'm envisioning. Um, and that's why you see so many layers. And you also see me, you know, again, being kind of timid, being very light-handed with the colors. Um, and I usually start down in a corner that maybe I can fix if I didn't like it. So even whenever I was working here on the bookcase over here, um, you know, I would start in this corner for the lighter colors, and when I was trying to figure out the darker colors, I started kind of in this corner and mixed some stuff until I felt comfortable with it. Even down here for the really, really dark, you know, I would always start in this corner down here. So again, in corners that may, you know, if I really didn't like it, um, if I made changes or, or whatever, you wouldn't notice it as much and you isn't necessarily people that are watching on YouTube I'm, I'm just talking in general some you know looking at the picture meaning myself wouldn't notice it or just somebody I was showing the pictures to not that anybody's really asking to see very many of my pictures <laughs> that's okay uh, I think it's interesting coloring for me really is for me but then again, I come out onto a public space like this and share it at the same time, so I don't know.
next color I'm coming in is with burnt ochre. It's PC943. And again, getting a little bit of that warmth in there before I come back in with what I would consider as a cooler brown. You know, going back to my kind of darker ones to really darken this up and start getting it to the layers. Um, so some of those browns, so like the dark brown uh, can be kind of cool colored and, you know, kind of have a cooling effect. Kind of like sapia, really, or sepia um, changes the the tone of of browns, whether, and to me, kind of starts coming off with a little bit of a gray, cool color. And so I'm just trying to get a good little warm, and then I'll start bringing in those dark colors again to really darken this up. Now, I did go ahead and decide to start doing just the dark part first, because again, it's always easier to go darker, it's hard to go light, and then once I get my dark at the level I want, then I will start coming in and start working on the lighter portions. So like the front of the drawers and things like that. I haven't been doing a lot of coloring is because I knew I was coming up to this page and I was a little bit stumped <laughs> as to what I was going to be doing. And I think when I get to that or whenever I'm in books and I, I want to do a page but I'm really not sure how to make something look the way I imagined. And I have to tell you, it doesn't always come out the way I imagined but it comes out in a way that's pleasing eventually for me. So, sorry about that, not sure what happened. But I can start feeling that the slickness is building up. And with Prismas, it almost feels like it grabs more pigment as it gets a little bit slicker in some, some cases. So if I look at these two colors, and I'm mainly looking at this on the side here compared to there, um, I've got quite a few more layers to go with it. So I know that probably what I need to come into, come back in with at this point is maybe even at this point I can do a slight light, light coating of black. Now black really helps me get that darker richer look because then I can come over top of it.
Now I'm going to start bringing in my chocolate and I'm going to also start working on the interior of these because as I said before, the interior, the darker, really helps me keep a good light color on the top. Kind of, it, it, If I do the dark first, then I know how far and how deep I can go with the lighter colors and still make a contrast. But So I'm going to come in with my chocolate and kind of go over a lot of it. So this is a good little corner for me to experiment, kind of what I was telling you, how I'm going to get it dark enough for my liking. So we just did that with the chocolate after we had went over it. Now I'm going to go ahead and come in with my black again and try to darken it up. I'm going to layer my blacks in here. Now very rarely is anything truly black, right? So that is to me one of the things that we have to make sure that we always notice that when we're using black, if we want a shadow, it needs to have an undercurrent of the co color that it would be. So this would be a dark brown in here, but it's only darker because it's in shadow. Like I said, so this is the black. I want to get it a little bit darker and bring in again my Tuscan red and that hopefully will start really giving it a different black dark color in there. I'm really liking that but I'm going to go over it one more time with black just to it's got a red color. Now I am, I know this is all going to, um, now I'm almost, almost burnishing at this point because, but this is really great paper so it doesn't burnish as easily, but it definitely allows you to layer. And this is what I like about my Prisma Premieres and their softness is I can create a new color. This isn't, so if I was my Faber Castells, this would have had to been done through layers as well, but I would have to do it slightly different because it doesn't, the layers don't mix as much as they do into creating a new color. It's a new shade of color. All right, so I don't know that you can tell that, but that is darker than this edge. And just to make sure of that, what I'm going to do is come in right now with my sand and kind of do a highlight here, highlight that up a little bit. So that it does look a little different than that inside. And that color combination I'm now going to repeat all the way through here. So starting again with my, my chocolate, then going to my black, then my Tuscan, and then my black again. So. I have some really fiddly bits so I am having to use and sharpen my pencils a lot for my Prismas which is unfortunate because they do, it eats them up, but I have so many of these tight little corners to get into that I need that sharper edge.
darker sections, you might see that I've actually changed that now I'm going this way instead of this way. And part of that reason is because I really want to try to get in without pushing too hard as much of the crevices as I can because as with any paper we can see, especially as you get darker, you, uh, get in there a little bit darker and darker, you can still see a little bit of white through there. Now that will all dissipate because I will be doing one final step and that is using my Gamsol to kind of get into these crevices. But by going back in the opposite direction, when I'm doing this to try to make it solid, a really solid dark color, um, it does help get into those, those spots. So. should be my last one. Hopefully we'll give it that final really dark cavernous look because to make it stand out slightly from the other parts is a round of black to finish it up. that I have a tendency to miss. All right, I think that's going to keep for now. And now it's going to be going and, oh, and I do want to go over all of the light wood around it with my sand again like I did before because I think that that kind of will help me keep it highlighted slightly so that it stands out against that dark cavernous shelf background. I am kind of using this almost as a blender at this point. I really like doing that using other colors as my blender. I don't actually go in. I, d I tried using the Prismacolor blender way, oh gosh, a year and a half, two years ago now, and no. To me, it was just it's so scratchy, so much hard work, my hand just fatigued. So that's why I use the Gamsol like I do, because it just it doesn't fatigue my hand as much and I have have a lot of control but I still use blending but usually I'm using a color like cream or uh, white or whatever off-white all right so one of the things I'm not liking is I just don't think it has a red enough hue I really like this deep red this is going more on the cool side and maybe it's because I haven't done these drawers yet but I'm going to do a quick little terracotta covering of all of my little places here and see if I can start bringing it back to more of that deep deep what mahogany color that I'm I'm hoping for but it just seems a little cool
So now comes where I start getting a little bit nervous because this is my lighter woods. And so normally what I would do about now is come in with probably not my darkest color, but start adding in the shadows where I think they might need to be. Now remember, I'm thinking of these as carvings all in here. So a carving would have a little bit of a, um, a darker aspect to it. So I'm going to really sharpen up my pencil here. Uh, and this is going to be for the drawers. Number PC943, so this is my burnt ochre. And I'm just going to start coming in and adding where I think maybe there might be some shadows, which right now is going to fall along that black line because that's kind of the dark curve. And then there would be some probably along the edge of the drawer a little bit. So again, as if they're little carvings into the wood. So they'd be slightly raised. Any place I would have shadows. It's just, it's a beginning. And right down here, I'm thinking of these as added carvings, which I'm surprised they haven't been broken off of all these years, but obviously her grandfather is very uh, cautious and safe. But I'm thinking of these as additional carvings. And again, maybe just a little bit lighter, because light is hitting them, I guess, is my idea. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and start playing with these before I go on with the rest of it, just so I can kind of get an idea of what I'm doing. So we started with, um, well, we've already put that really, really light, the very beginning dark brown over everything, and that's that's what that was. I'm now going to come in with my sand and put a light base on of sand, just to put an extra little color in there before I start doing other layers. I'm going to do it over everything, and it, the sand really warms it up. chocolate because everything's better with chocolate kind of getting a caramel look over there so maybe I'm starting to think this is what type of candy bar I want <laughs> chocolate and caramel and again I want these really to be kind of the highlighted spots so I'm going to start introducing some more definite shadows and darkening a little bit Again, so I'm really doing that layering so that when I get to that final, the color that I want, I can really do some some blending. Mm -hmm. Come in with this really dark umber and see if I can make it pop a little bit more. This is a pretty, pretty dark. There we go. Just a little bit. Just a little bit.
Now I'm going to go around and come out of those shadows just a little bit. I'm using the Burnt Ochre again. Just kind of fading it out into here. Because remember, we really want those, I want the highlights to really fall on those um, carved pieces. take a little break for a moment and I'll come back so as you may have noticed I took a little bit longer than just a break but <laughs> um, what I suddenly realized is I want to kind of finish the project and get to that final step because after seeing you know all of this part and this part done with the with the wood that you didn't really need to see the third one done so I went ahead and completed it but what I wanted to show you is my final step now if you've watched any of my videos previously, uh, you realize I'm not a big one about um, using blending pencils or that I either do a form of blending with another colored pencil. So I kind of have done that to blend these colors a little bit more together. But usually my final step and the one that gets me to, let me go ahead and see if I can move this over for you. Let's see, here we go. And this right here, almost giving it a smooth wood grain look. And in here too, where it's not, you don't see as many of the bumps, uh, the little white pieces. That one is, these are done using my Gamsol. So again, this is just a uh, mineral spirits. It's an odorless mineral spirits. And what I do is I just use a brush. I use a paintbrush. And all I'm going to do is go in and start kind of mixing these colors together. And what this does is it helps me get into those little tiny white spaces because it's actually dissolving, I believe, the wax and you are moving the pigment around. Now with the, the Prisma Premieres, I have, I've tried it with my Faber-Castell, uh, but my Prismas, I had also used Prismas, so I've never done just my Faber-Castells my polychromos um, to see how they work necessarily but I know what I you know with the prismas here it dissolves the wax and then it moves around the pigment so you get it into those little tiny holes on the paper and Joanna gives us great paper to work with it's not a comment whatsoever about the paper so let's see you can start seeing it kind of meld together and giving it that burl look, that that kind of mixed wood look. And again, it gets into those little crevices. And it's really simple. So all I have, let me tip you up just a little bit. Oh, I can't. <laughs> Hold on. is a baby food jar or and it's, it's one that I picked up from Hobby Lobby that was never used as baby food but that's basically it and inside it if you can see I have a oh there it is right in here is a cotton ball and the cotton ball is saturated with Gamsol now part of the reason that I only do a cotton ball is what I like is because I can also and think about it uh, oil uh, 
mineral spirits are used for cleaning brushes so as I come in I can clean off my brush and I can just kind of dab it on that it also you know it, I don't lose as much and I've had that in there forever I mean this Gamsol last I, I bought myself some extra Gamsol oh gotta get you back down oh, actually I could probably move up up and over there you go um, so the Gamsol I've had one little tiny jar uh, for two years now and I'm not done. I was concerned I would need more and I bought another one and I haven't even cracked it open. Uh, but I use it a lot, particularly when I'm trying to do these really deep colors. But I've used it on all, so many of my books. Um, not just Joanna's, uh, but Creative Haven Space type paper books. Um, uh, let's see, you know, Kirby Roseanne's, uh, it, it, uh, Beckett. Jasmine Beckett's books, all of those. So just the different and what it different papers. So what it does is just allow me to really fill in those little white spaces and give a smoother look. I also don't really worry. I'm not going over the lighter. I mean, I'm going over the lighter bits now, but I'm not so worried about it even kind of blending some of my dark colors into my lighter because that's what shadows are. They're a gentle blend and this kind of helps it. It's just a final step. I also find that when I use my blender pencils, they hurt my hands too much when I tried them. I mean, you're adding more wax. And I felt like what I was really doing, and that is probably me using them incorrectly, what I was really doing was burnishing the paper uh, and mixing it that way. And what's interesting with the, the Gamsol here, or the mineral spirits, I would assume work exactly the same because this is just a brand name. Remember, you can use any odorless mineral spirits. Um, what I find is I can do this even earlier on in the process and I can come back because I've not burnished the paper and I can add even more layers if I want to. So that's a bonus point with the Gamsol. And again, I could have been using those blender pencils completely wrong, but I enjoy the painting aspect and the kind of watching the chemical reaction is kind of fun. Sometimes you see a lot more. I'm not seeing it as much here but I will probably see it more in the darker colors and again this also has to do with the fact that I'm layering if you only did one or two layers the likelihood of this really being effective or you seeing that change is not going to be uh, as prevalent as easy to see if it if it happens at all this is because of my ridiculous amount of layers <music>
I can push that um, push those colors into the little white crevices and so yeah it makes it more solid and that's why I really like this stuff and I'm doing this very comfortably you know I'm not having to push hard I'm not and the the, the brush is comfortable go ahead and show you too because I know some people can get concerned so if you look on the other side see there you can see it coming through however once it dries because it is odorless mineral spirit so it's going to evaporate you will not see that and there is no stain so if you think about it I've started way over here I've done a lot more it's already fading this is the most recent and this is the stuff that was was last so let's see yeah first I'm sorry so this was my first section and you can see it's already starting to dry. This will dry too, and you won't be able to see it. And it doesn't damage the paper, so that way if I, if I decide to color on the other side, it's not going to be something that we need to be worried about coloring over. It doesn't damage the paper. Now, granted, probably right now, if I went in while it's still wet, I might cause some damage, because again, it's the, the wet that damages the paper, not the actual uh, paint and or, in this case, the actual portion that is the mineral spirits it's, it's the liquid aspect of it but once it dries it's fine and that's what I was saying then you can go over and you can color over it again if you wanted to add a shadow or make something a little bit darker or you know whatever you're you're wanting to do just tweak it and then what I'll do too is go back and see some bits that I might still see some uh, white and I, I try to go over it one more time to see if I can get it a little bit smoother. But in essence, that's it. So that is how I did both the bookcase and now this little piece. And just to give you a little preview of um, this page overall, as you can see, there's other colors added. But I've also got, I've already started on the desk over here. So I've kind of made it a matching piece. <laughs> Uh, but again, it's almost like they're carved pieces out of really dark wood with a little bit of maybe burl wood and then you've got the relief, the uh, the carved parts that are standing out. So I've still got a lot to do over on this page, uh, but it's all, you know, coming along. I hope you enjoyed. I'm going to bring you back out just a little bit so you can see the whole page. I hope you enjoyed just kind of seeing how I made the wood look, how I'm trying to make the carved pieces stand out. Maybe it helps you a little bit or Maybe this was a color combination you thought about doing and you're like, nope, don't like it. So maybe I saved you from that too. You never know. Um, thanks for watching. Keep coloring those pages until next time.